Hello, everyone. It is good to be with you again. I hope that you and yours are healthy and safe as we continue to deal with this pandemic. The last time I was with you, I spoke about listening to your children and illustrated that idea with a situation that occurred with our youngest daughter in school. Today, I want to continue with the idea of listening and then adding to it the need for mediating and negotiating after all the information is in uh, about a particular situation and decisions have been passed down. It was the fall of 1990. Our oldest son was a senior at Berkner High School, an A and B student involved in church with a part-time job on the cross-country um, team and working on his brown belt and taekwondo and also working on his Eagle Scout. So the kind of kid that you read about and you say, really, that is my son? No way. But he uh, never gave us an ounce of trouble of any kind until one night, uh, it was a Saturday night, and I tended to go to bed early because Sunday I had my first service at eight o'clock in the morning. And he did not come home at his curfew time. And uh, as a parent, you will realize that eventually you'll sleep with one eye open and one ear perked up to make sure that your kids are safe and they're home when you ask them to be. So we had not heard from him, uh, so that was strange. So we were up and um, it was 30 minutes after curfew, then 45, then an hour. And we became very, very concerned and uh, because we had not heard from him. And now begins the worry that every parent has, and that is that something bad had happened. So we called his girlfriend's house, and the parents said, no, she was in even before curfew, and we do not know where his son is. Well, that's something that really does not settle well with parents. Uh, before calling the police, he comes in. He comes in the front door, like always, not trying to hide, not tippy-toeing to not wake us up. But he had a very sad face and wanting to talk with us. Now, unfortunately, his mom was livid. And she um, pretty much said to him, you've lost your privilege for driving and you are grounded for a month. And she stormed out of the den and into the bedroom. I asked him to sit down in the den with me and tell me what happened. Why was he so late? Why didn't he call us? He related to me the details that his girlfriend had invited a former boyfriend to drop by or sort of appear at the restaurant where they were having dinner. Well, that uh, ruined the evening for my son, and it uh, spun out a uh, tremendous argument on the way home. He took her home, and then he felt that he needed to think about what went on. So he drove to a local park to think about what transpired and to get in touch with his anger and his great sense of hurt. Coming home without cooling off was not something he would do, he said. The embarrassment was so great that he did not want to face us. I asked him to go to bed and try to get some sleep, and we would pick this up in the morning after church. And we did, the three of us, when the tempers were, were cool, we three discussed the details of that night and how sorry he was that he put us through what he put us through and the worry and fear that we experienced. With all the facts out, I thought it was time to revisit the punishment. I experienced some pushback from his mother, I must say, and at the end, the punishment was lessened to two weeks of being grounded. He still had his car privileges because he had to work. He had to go to extracurricular activities, and he gladly accepted it. And it was for one reason, and that he did not stop 
to call us. Now, mind you, this was before cell phones. It would have been different if it happened now. I think what we all need to realize is that we are not always right in our decisions, especially if they're made in the midst of anger and fear. It is more than okay to say, I overdid it, or was it fair, or is there another way to address the situation? I would advise you to share your thinking with your child so that he or she will see that your main care for them is their safety. Will your child see you as a weak link? I don't believe so. What I firmly believe is that we will be seen as fair, honest, and full of care for them. Oh, and most important, we'll be seen as approachable in case something were to happen in the future. Thank you for listening to this. Continue to listen, try to negotiate and mediate so that your children will always come to you. God bless you all.